In this video, I will show you how you can actually draw support and resistance the correct way so that your charts don't look like this. And before we continue, if you have any suggestions for future videos, you can drop them in the comments below because I'll be reading all of them. And without further ado, let's get on with the video. Support and resistance is the most important technique to master when trading using technical analysis yet 99% of traders still get it wrong. So why is it very important to understand? It's because once an area of support or resistance have been identified, it can serve as a potential high win rate trade opportunities. Like in this example, in this chart, we can spot that there's an area of resistance here as prices went up to this level and reverses downwards. So the next time when price hits this level again, there's a high chance that it's going to reverse downwards again. And so this can be a possible trade opportunity. So that is why support and resistance is very important. A common mistake that I see traders make is that they draw too many lines like this. We can all agree that this looks really confusing. Support and resistance is meant to make your analysis easier, not to confuse you. And the reason that traders do this is because they don't follow the secret rules of support and resistance that I'm going to reveal to you right now. So, the first criteria that validates a level of support and resistance is multiple rejections. Let me show you what I mean. So in this chart, we can see that prices went down to this level three times before reversing back up, giving us multiple rejections. And so we can draw a support line here. And you can also see this happening on the top. Every time prices went up to this level, it reverses downwards. You can see this happening multiple times on three different occasions. So we can draw a resistance line here. Now, you may be wondering, what if the chart looks like this, where there are still no multiple rejections yet? Well, that brings us to our second rule. The price needs to move away drastically from a swing high or swing low. In this chart, we can see that there aren't any multiple rejections that formed yet. But, we can see that the price formed a swing high and then moved away from it drastically. And so we can also draw a resistance line here. It also works for swing lows as well. Here, we can see that there aren't any multiple rejections that formed yet. So you can just draw a support line here, as prices went down, then reverses upwards drastically. So the next criteria is that one line can be both a support and resistance at the same time. Let me show you what I meant. So in this chart, we can see that the price formed a level of resistance here. As prices went up, hit and reversed downwards multiple times, indicating a rejection in the upper part. And as we look to the right, we can see that the price broke past the resistance line and formed multiple rejections again, this time in the down part. So now, this previous resistance line has become a support line. Remember, if it's on top, then it's a resistance, and if it's at the bottom, then it's a support. Now, the next criteria is the most important criteria. The levels must be nearest or closest to the current price. Let me give you an example. So, in this chart, we can clearly spot a level of both support and resistance here. Now, this is what I meant by closest to the current price. You don't want to pick a zone that is too far away from the current price, like this one and this one. Even though these two lines fit the criteria of being a support and resistance line, they are still too far away from the price. Therefore, there is no point of drawing them. Remember, we only want to draw the lines that actually matters, because too many lines will look confusing. So now, let's implement these techniques real time. Here's the Aussie dollar, and starting from the top, we spotted an area here as prices went up, hit and reverse. So this fits into our first criteria, which is price needs to move away from a swing high drastically. And this level is also closest to the current price. Moving on, we spotted another level 
as prices went down to this level and reverses upwards. So let's see which criteria does this level fulfills. First, the price moved away drastically from a point of swing low. Next, there are multiple rejections within this area. And also, this line can be both support and resistance at the same time. Lastly, the levels were formed recently. So let's move on to another chart. So again, starting from the top, we spotted this level right here, where prices went up, hit and reversed downwards. So let's see which criteria does this level fulfill. First, it made a drastic movement from a point of swing high. Then, there are multiple rejections, as you can see here. And it's also the nearest level from the current price. Which is why we are not drawing a level here, because it's too far away from the current price. And down here, we also spotted another level. As you can see, prices went down, hit and reverse upwards. So it made a drastic movement from a point of swing low. There are also multiple rejections. Plus, it's also the nearest level from the current price. So this is how I would draw a support and resistance for this pair. So let's move on to another chart. So here's the Euro Australian Dollar. And as we look at the current price, we can spot a level up here. Let's see which criteria does this level fulfills. First, there are multiple rejections. Because as you can see, the price tried to break out of this level but failed multiple times. Next, the price moved away drastically from a point of swing high. And lastly, the area is closest to the current price. Now, as we look to the middle, we also spotted another level down here. So let's see which criteria does this level have. First, we can see multiple price rejections at this point. Next, this level can be both support and resistance at the same time, like we saw here. It acts as a resistance at this point while also being a support here. Next, this level is closest to the current price, meaning that the levels were formed recently. So this is why I didn't accommodate this level down here. Even though this level fits the criteria of being a support, it's still too far away from the current price. Therefore, there's really no point of drawing them. So this is how I would draw a support and resistance for this pair. Now, notice that by only drawing the lines that actually matters and ignoring the ones that doesn't, it makes your chart seem a lot smoother. And if you want a more in-depth explanation about the entries and exit strategies that you can use with support and resistance, you can check out my previous video. So that's all for today, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.